Hello and welcome to another Ye Olde Battle Vets hobby report or hobby blog, which is actually what this is more like. Today I'm doing something different. I'm going to be going through building a Bushido board. So I haven't actually played Bushido yet. I'm hoping to play a game this week sometime. It's a quite cool looking game. Played on a 2x2 two two board. That's what this is for. Um, I've bought lots of different bits of terrain during various stages of being built and I'm going to use this video it's going, to, it's going to form a series of videos on how I get on with building my board it's going to be more like a video blog so I'm starting off today with essentially telling you what my plan is for my board and then I'm going to start building bits of it showing you how I get on so each video is going to be showing a different part of it and hopefully you can learn a little bit about building your own board learn from any mistakes I make, get any ideas. I'll talk you through each bit of terrain I've got and where I've got them from, so you can, if you want to get them, you can copy it as well. And then later on, we, me and Jack will play some games. I've got two starter sets now. I've got the Prefecture Ryu starter set and the Jung Pirate starter set. So hopefully I'll get this painted up and then me and Jack do a few reports on it as well. On hopefully a completed Bushido board. So, just going to quick, do a quick overview of what my basic plan is. This side, I want to, I want to try and do a double-sided board. So nothing's going to be fit, very little is going to be fixed onto the board. One side is going to be a kind of dojo slash shrine. And the other side is going to be a dungeon. Because I do own a MDF dungeon that I bought from Bendy Board. And I haven't really found out how to work out how to use it yet. But I'm going to use it to make a Bushido dungeon on the other side, which could be quite interesting. Hopefully they'll have two very different sides to the board. So I'm now gonna put the camera on a tripod and go through how I'm gonna plan my board, do some markings on this side and, and go from there. So this is my two by two board. Nice big thick plywood, um, given to me by a friend. So thank you, Jason, if you watch this. Um, my basic plan is to paint this entire side green to start with. It's going to be like a forestry area and then I'm going to spray in or paint in some pathways as well. I've got a few different bits. Like I said I've got what's essentially going to be my dojo so eventually it'll look like that. Um, I'm going to paint it, I I'll paint it white and I'm going to paint the detailing on it red so it looks a bit more interesting than just, I don't want it to look like an MDF building but I am going to leave this bit to look like wood because I think that works quite well. My idea to have is to have this probably in a corner somewhere, so maybe on this corner like that, so it doesn't take up a middle part of the board, and then the models can move in and out of it. Then I've got so that's that. There's the roof to it. I can't, I can't when I built it. I'll show you again. So the roof will go on like that. It's got another bit of roof on it. it goes it goes like that. And um, what's that around? I think. Okay, so that's that building. I might have it and leave that there to get an idea of what that will look like. Put the other one on. There. So that's that building there. I've then got another MDF building. This I'm just going to spray. I only built this today. So I'm going to spray this completely white. And there's like a flame motif on there. I might paint that orange or some red, some things that look a bit like fire. My idea at the moment to have that. Again in a corner opposite that way around. Um, and then there's plenty of space in the middle to put scatter terrain. Uh, as I said, I'm not fixing any of this down to the board because it means that I can well, I could have one that could have that there. And I play it like a game, I'll have it in the middle. So I don't I don't want the, the board to be too stuck, then the games might start to feel a bit stilted because you're always playing on exactly the same board. So I'll have to, probably I'll have the other side of it, which will be the dungeon, I'll do that as a separate um, video. I've then got various bits of uh, foliage terrain. I've got both of these I got on eBay. They came from China, um, exceptionally cheap. I don't know, I'm now, first of all, I've got out, so I don't know how good they are. I got these ones because they had the tallest, these are the tallest ones you could get, get them out. Be losing quite a few bits. These bits are quite relatively tall. So my plan, they're losing a lot of bits, I think I'll just lose some and then 
yeah, they stopped they stop losing bricks after a while. So my plan with these, I'm not going to put them in a bank, so I'm actually going to drill holes directly into the boards and then push them in so they will sit into the wood of the board. So my idea is to have a forested area over here where if I want to transport the board, I just take all the trees off, put them in a bag and then stick these in later. I can have the odd tree over here as well and the odd one maybe under the shrine or next to the building. And I want it to look like it's a shrine slash dojo in the middle of a forest. So I'm going to have the odd tree just on the outside as if this is like a clearing in the middle of a forest area. So they look pretty cool. I like those, I don't know how long they'll last because they were very cheap. So it might be they end up buying some of the more expensive ones later that have got better foliage or might end up gluing a lot of this stuff that's already fallen off on them. Um, but there's only a good place to start anyway. So I think well, I'm going to pencil in some of these ideas. So I'm going to put this building in here, like that. So we'll paint over this when I have to paint it, but it's a good sort of idea. Um, this is basically a footprint the shrine as well. And then we're going to have, I think there are quite a few trees over here. So this will be trees. No, I can make them fit. Still want to get a gap. So you've got lots of different sizes, which is nice. I think I put them far enough apart just to work a bit models in between them. So I'm going to put trees in here. I've then got some other little bits of foliage. Again, first of all, I've got these out, I don't know what they look like. It's a bit tropical to me, but oh, they look alright. One that's closer to the camera, I'll come around the back so I can see what it looks like. It looks like that. Not too bad, I reckon. I think they look quite good actually. I wasn't sure how they were going to look when I bought them. So I can dot a few of those in amongst the trees. And we've got little flowers on them too, that's quite like that. I could put a few around here as well. And I might have a pond, kind of a contemplation pond over here, and have a few of those around it, I think. So let's put a few circles, those, and I'll put a tree here, I think, as well. So I've got trees, shrine, I'll call them a shrine, the building, pond area. These will be scattered around as well, I think. I'll just have a few dotted all over the board um, around the, well, the big ones as well. That's cool. Um, dotted around the shrine and things. Um, in the middle, I think I'm going to have a path coming in here. It's not going to be totally straight, and a path coming in here. In the middle, I want to have an open space. Might scatter to in it, but that will move around her game. So in this middle bit, that I'm going to, so the path I'm going to use, probably a spray paint to spray in a path, and um, spray in a circle in the middle. It's going to be kind of like a training circle. So I imagine this is where the warriors that live in the building or, or in this area, that they, they're going to train in this circle. So I'm going to put stones I've got all the way around. Probably a tree either entrance. I might, see, I, might, I might even get some fencing or things and then scatter train in the middle. So the board will look relatively full, but I think that probably works quite well with Bushido. So that's the first part, that's the first video I'm going to do for this, with my plan for it. Hopefully, my next one I'll have painted the boards, sprayed in the pathway for you to see, and hopefully, I'll have built this building as well and we'll kind of go from there. I'll then show you what I've done when I've drilled in the trees, put the foliage in, stuck the rocks down. One of my ideas for, which I saw on a um, Chris Hay on his Bushido board, is he put some wood on the sides to make a lip so that when you put it down, you have stones and things stuck on it so they don't get squashed. So I'm going to do that with mine as well, so that when, because I'm going to glue the stones down around, I'm not going to glue any of the trees, like I said, or the buildings, and then turn it over and use the dungeon side. Dungeon side is going to come after I've done this one. So I hope that idea has been useful to you and um, you want to look at the rest of the Bushido videos that I do and we'll go from there. Thank you for watching.